and we're back for part two of our spooky Halloween special discussion, Scary Things in Non-Horror Games. I've still got Nintendo Dope Man with me, Septendo, and Xenotur Gaming. Uh, probably the scariest game I ever played that isn't a horror game, Super Metroid. Oh. That game is a spook fest from beginning to end. I think, like, that was the first ever game to really capture, like, an atmosphere of the game and not just be about the game, about being fun, you know? I mean, like, even, I think Donkey Kong Country came before, and even that had some moody music that fit the environments, but nothing really, like, immersed you, like, Super Metroid. I mean, the music for every area is perfect, man. For Brinstar, music is perfect. Meridia, music totally matches. And just, like freaks you out man it's super claustrophobic <laughs> ridley ridley in metroid zero mission and in super metroid the scream the the the, the ear piercing scream that he does scary. oh yeah what about nemesis it's called nemesis right or what is what is the the really creepy boss in what uh, metroid yeah crate uh, crate no it's it's the Fantoon. I, I was thinking it was called Nemesis, but that's that's not sounding right. It's Resident Evil. Forget Orphean. Maybe it's Nightmare. Let me let me look it up. Oh, that's from uh, Fusion. Yeah. Yeah, that thing. That thing's creepy. With the melting face, right? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I remember that, that thing. Oh, no, that is thing creepy. is creepy. Yeah, <laughs> Fusion is a creepy game, actually. If you want the creepy boss in Metroid, that's it. I don't. I don't think anything can compete with Nightmare. I'm not saying that Ridley himself is scary, just the, the, the noise that he did when you first meet him, the scream, or when you hurt him so much that he makes that um, that ear-piercing scream. That kind of, yeah. like, scared me. Like, it was like, wow. Yeah, but everything about Nightmare is creepy. Like, even, even the build-up to him is yeah, creepy. Everything about uh, Fusion is creepy, really. Uh, and uh, Metroid Prime also, uh, I think Metro uh, 2 Echoes was scary almost throughout the entire one, especially when uh, starting at the second level when you start going to the underwater section, I forget what it's called. And uh, then the third one, which is that weird sort of, it's not a city, but it looks like a city from far away. It's got lights and all that. It's kind of mm -hmm. taking place outside and like in an exterior of like a space station or something. Or not, it's on the planet, but... And then in the first Prime game, where you have to go to the space pirate laboratories and there's no power and all the lights are out and you have to use the thermal vision, and, like, the only thing that... The only thing you can see are, like, the, uh, the glowing uh, tanks that have Metroids in them. Oh. And the Metroids will, like, bust out. Man. Yeah, that, that, was a good, that was a good part of that game. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the Prime games, but that was... That was something that I did like. Jaws Unleashed had some scary moments for me. I don't know if y'all played that one. I played Sonic Unleashed for five minutes. <laughs> um, Jaws Unleashed was on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox and PC. Um, basically, when you go into the abyss, it scares me. And then you have to fight the, the, uh, the Colossus Squid. Here's a scary scenario. You go to play Mario Maker, and you click random for a random game. So it's telling <laughs> you get a random Kaizo Mario stage. Oh, great. I've never owned a Wii U, but I've watched people play Super Mario Maker, and... I own a 3DS, so I played on that. Though the only bad part is that they didn't let you do Amiibo. Yeah. On the 3DS, and that's the whole re the on on the 3DS version. That's the whole reason I got Super Mario Maker. I wanted to be running around as Mewtwo, just like throwing psychic beams at everybody. I know he can't do that, but it's just. But still, it helps me with the exaggeration and hyperbole. Did they add Shovel Knight to the amiibo thing in in um in Mario Maker? I won't be surprised. I don't think they I, did though. I I didn't I, I didn't wrong, I didn't see that at all. Cause I would I would love that. And by the way, they need to make a Mario Maker for the Switch. Also, um, I was gonna say the final boss in um, Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story was terrifying, but um, I did. I was gonna say that 
because of just how hard he is. But um, but uh, the hard part, but, but like the really um, the strange thing about him is uh, I just thought as soon as I started watching, looking at him, like thinking, wait, could they add that final boss as an echo fire for Bowser? Because if you think about it, that game is coming out recently. And if they add him as an Echo Fighter, he could get like a bit more potential. Like it could, get, it could be a good marking stra strategy. Wait, uh, who's an Echo Fighter? I, did, I got disconnected and I just came back. Final boss to Bowser's Inside Story, because they did just re-release the game. Oh or, yeah, yeah. Dark, Dark Bowser. Yeah, I think that's him. I never finished that game. I did. Bowser got a cake. <laughs> We're. Are they still inside him for that? If we're talking creepy things in Mario and Luigi games, I think Bowser's other forms like Trouser and Boletta are creepier. Trouser. What was creepy is Bowsette. Bowsette's not creepy. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kind of into it, man. I don't know. I mean, it's creepy because of the internet. It's creepy about what the internet can do to something. Well, I mean, Nintendo considered doing that, like in Odyssey. Yeah, it looks kind of badass. I don't see why people are hating on it. It looks pretty sweet. I mean, I, I like the design, plain the plain and simple design, but it's just like every other concept just feels weird to me. Honestly, I like it more than a peach peachette. I don't really understand this whole, like, a toadette eats, gets a crown and she turns into peach. What does that even mean? Honestly, Bowsette, I'm pretty sure they get the eyes wrong with Bowsette because if you look at um, peachette, her eyes are gray. Oh, that's the first thing I noticed about her. Like I looked her, I looked at the eyes, and like they were start in stark contrast to Peach's. I got one uh, boss that kind of creeped me out. It was I forgot his name. Um, the main boss in Superstar Saga. Cacoletta. Yeah, is it the green guy with the cape? That, yes. That's, okay, yeah, he kind of creeped me out, and I. I don't know why, like, uh, like things like that creep me out. I don't know why. Queen, like... Queen Bean terrified me as a kid because I was awful at RPGs, and when you implement having to do strategy during an RPG, I was awful at that as a kid. So timing and dodging and all that as Mario Luigi, yeah, Queen Bean was a true test of strength to me for a time. I actually had my cousin beat her for once, but I got bored and reset the game and got stuck on her again. But uh. Now, I just and now I'm stuck on the name Queen Bean. Sounds too much like Green Bean. <laughs> you know what boss freaked me out was the the uh, giant hornet from uh, Donkey Kong Country Two. Oh yeah, that King was Zing. yeah, that was pretty freaky when I was young. He didn't bother me. No. Although. Kind of an N64 thing. Like, I think the N64 was like one of the creepiest eras in gaming. But when I was a kid, I was always freaked out when enemies chased me. Because <laughs> in my child mind, I wasn't thinking about, oh, there's gonna be limitations to how far they can chase me. I was thinking once they saw me, they would be chasing me the entire level. Wow. And I, <laughs> I would check back, I'd think that they would be somewhere around there. I, I just remembered Custom Rubber Arena. It was cr a creepy thing to me is that after in post game, after you've beaten like everything, you f you find some guy that looks like you, but dark you, but looks like dark you. He transforms into something else, into like other people. Then suddenly he, he give, after beating him, he gives you a dark band, and then he like tell, then you have to find go into some guy's house. Then suddenly you're allowed to go in this guy's basement. And there's an entire game, there's an entire illegal fi fighting ring going on down there, and like the entire area is just creepy. You see, like you see, like the dark side of, of the world that you're living in. It's just like, just kind of, it just as a kid, it's creepy. Like the music would give me a chill up my spine. What talking to people and how they lost all their money doing all, it would, it would be too real for me sometimes. Have any of you guys played Axiom Verge? No. I have. Oh, uh, that's on my backlog. It's disturbing. I didn't it's really find any of it creepy, though. It's, yeah, it's disturbing. 
That's what I, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's disturbing. Um, especially the first part with those red bubble things. I don't I don't know if they're eggs or bubbles. I don't know. Those were pretty weird. Probably the the scariest thing in that game was the fact that it's bugged and that you can't actually beat it. <laughs> because when you beat the final boss, you get a system error and the game crashes. And as far as I know, they still haven't patched that out, so it works. So the Wait, game on... is unbeatable on Switch. Oh, on Switch. Okay, yeah, I got it on Switch. I haven't even beat it yet. But um, I didn't. Now know this that. is this is kind of cheating, but another creepy thing in games, pretty consistently, is any out of bounds, and and a lot of glitches too. But if you go out of bounds, you can get some like really creepy stuff. Well, yeah, there was far out. there was this glitch back in AC Unity, Assassin's Creed Unity. I think some of you might know what I'm talking about. Maybe not. Um, I don't really like Assassin's Creed. I okay. played one of them and I like did not get into it. Yeah, you can even get into Black Flag, and I really like pirates. I really want to play a good pirate game, but like anyway, I played one of them and I came across plenty of glitches. It, it, they were they were funny glitches though. Like the trees crashed and turned into like these green colored rocks. Does anybody remember? That in um, Fallout New Vegas, and when you opened the game, you saw like the doctor that that patched you up, and like his head would rotate inside of his chest and back up. I saw a video about that. Yeah, just imagine <laughs> being a kid who, who somehow got their parents to get that game for them, and then they then they just get they open up the game to see that. Man, now I really want to play it. What were you gonna say about Assassin's Creed, though? Um. There was this glitch in Unity, and it was like day one glitch, so obviously, you know, day one has a lot of glitches. Um, well, anyway, Unity has a lot of glitches, but there's this facial glitch, like the, the face, the head glitch, where all you see oh. is, the, is the jaw, or like the teeth, like it's, it's like co comedic teeth and eyeballs, that's all you see. And it was very popular at its time, like it was a meme. You can actually look up the picture right now, um, or wait, like, obviously after we're done recording. But it was so weird. <laughs> it sounds weird. It's creepy. It's actually it's actually belongs. In, it belongs um, in a museum. <laughs> it, it's so. It, it's like all you see is like fake. You know the wind up comedy teeth. It's like that's what the teeth look like, and then just eyeballs floating. Where the head should be. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, it's not right. <laughs> hey, you but, know when you were saying about stuff that like chases you? Do you remember the, uh, in Super Mario Brothers 2, those, uh, weird balls? Every time you'd grab a key, it would start chasing oh, yeah, the, you. Oh, that the Vantos. That freaked me out. Vantos, yeah. I didn't like those guys. They, 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 they freaked me out too. It was hard, like, digging through the sand. When those guys were following you, ugh. The the bird, the bird that opens its mouth when you pick up the ore, that kind of scared <laughs> me. <laughs> Not as much as losing. I, I can see that. I can see that the way that it just like unhinges its jaw. I think I broke Super Mario Two uh, Bros Two once because this terrified me because I thought I had to beat Birdo, but Birdo was on a platform, but the platform everything looked glitched. There was looked like there was no floor, and there was like the, there was random floor panels everywhere. So I had to like, so I tried fighting Birdo. I think Birdo glitched into the ceiling, but I remember fighting Birdo, like she tried my hardest to fight her in this glitch map. I think I beat her at some point, but there was no door to exit through. I don't even know how this happened. All I remember is that there was no like the, the floor was just not. It was, it was barely any floor. There's just random floor panels like piling up, piled up on each other in some areas. And Berta was somehow functionally working over, like she was in the foreground over those panels. It was, it was, it was a weird look to what this led to the area. Sounds like you might have tilted your cartridge. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but I mean, I was playing on like the Game Boy, so. Oh, uh, Super Mario mm -hmm. Advance. Yeah, I don't remember what happened to that cartridge. The Advanced series was cool. How they redid the games. 
Yeah, favorite. that was the first time I ever played Yoshi's Island. Yeah. Yoshi's first Island time, was amazing. First yeah. time I ever played Super Mario 3. Oh, wow. And, you know, I can't go back to, like, those NES graphics, because I grew up with Mario All-Stars, and then I also played the Advance game, so, like, when I look at the NES originals, I'm like... All-Star like mode! Yeah. I... I've never played any of the e-reader levels. Oh yeah, me neither. But apparently, if you get a um, if if somehow now since all the emulator pe uh, websites are being taken down, if you get an emulator and if you get the um, uh, Super Mario Advanced Four, which is Super Mario Three um, One, and if you get a save file that has the e-reader cards, you can play them. Oh, all right. That's what I've heard. <laughs> Is there a way to play them on the virtual console? Um, virtual console on Wii U, yes. You can, they, they come with them. Alright. They come right with on. all of them. So. What else, man? What other... Well, if you could, if you list one thing from an actual horror game that freaked you out, what would it be? I only ever played one horror game, and that's Spooky's House of Jump Scares. And it would, it would have to be when things actually just started getting freaky. When you actually saw actual horror, like phantoms floating around, that terrified me. Um, that's hard. Um, I think I think PT has to be the most scariest game to date. <laughs> that's I mean, not even the full game. That's, that's it's not even the scary. full game, and that's some <clears throat> scary stuff. And, it was pretty scary. And it's sad that they had to stop. It's yeah. sad what Konami has done to its franchises. Oh it's yeah. It's sad what they've done to Kojima. Well, I mean Kojima, all I mean, I'm pretty sure that if anybody listening is a is a um fan of the old the the old uh, Konami games like Metal Gear and all that, I just say go buy go 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 gather like gather the fan base, rally together to buy the the IP and give it to Kojima. If you if everybody wants an actual good game, well, Death Stranding is supposed to be in the um, Metal Gear, um, <laughs> Metal Gear. Uh, what do you call it? Um, universe. Universe. Yeah. I saw that conspiracy theory. Yep, and then one of the um, bosses in that game is supposed to be Psycho Mantis. Metal Gear Survive is supposed to be in the Metal Gear Solid universe, but nobody considers it to be. I played the beta, and it's okay, it, it, but it, it's not a Metal Gear game. Metal Gear Survive is not, it, it's its a zombie, it's a zombie survival game, but it's one, it's just Metal Gear Solid 5 with a zombie survival coat of paint. Exactly what it is. It's like they just sold a mod for Metal Gear Solid 5 as a full game. I don't really know how I feel about PT, because it was good, and I'm sure Kojima would have made a great game, but they're... There is no Silent Hill game unless it's made by the original members of Team Silent. Like, I'm just a purist like that. You know, you can't, like, take someone else's uh, work and, like, uh, continue it for them, you know? And uh, I don't know if there really would have been a Silent Hill 5, because a lot of the members left until, like, Akira was one of the only ones left, and he kind of made it clear he didn't really know the universe too well, even though he was, like, the perfect composer for it. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. The thing that scared me about Silent Hill, you know the, the the nurse with the snail scratching on the wall in one of the games? I think that was Downpour. I never played Downpour. Okay. Yeah, that one was pretty good. You ever play any of the, uh, the first four games? Oh, yeah. Of course, PS1 yeah. and then up to PS2, yeah. Yeah, right on. Yeah, those are the the real ones. I saw I saw a meme where it says there's a doghouse and there's no dogs be uh, be in sight, and then there's like the demon dogs right next to the doghouse. Yeah. It was like it was so funny. <laughs> that that game though was like the fog. The fog just like until you walk straight into an enemy, you're like oh god. I think that uh. The technical limitations of before really, really defined the good horror games back then. Oh, and yeah. now that there are less technical limitations, it's harder to make. It's harder to like um, do so, do something that's really defining for the genre. Well, most horror games, especially back then, took place like a room at a time, 
so like they would just load one area but silent hill didn't take place in one uh building like resident evil or one like uh it didn't have pre-rendered backgrounds so they have to render everything in real time and it took place in this sort of like open world environment in like a big town it wasn't just a haunted house it was a haunted town and they couldn't they didn't have that much uh, draw distance back then so they used the fog to make it look well, so they used the uh, lack of draw distance and they just made that look like fog and that worked yeah. out and then they even kept it going even until the uh, third game fourth game didn't have so much fog because it didn't really take place that much in silent hill but and then the only the second half of the third game took place in silent hill but they still kept the fog but then by that time they could make it look more realistic and not like a graphic limitation and it still like you couldn't see the enemies you could hear them right before they emerged if you kept the radio on and then i don't i don't know like uh, if i had to pick one thing from a horror game i have no idea man there's way too many for me to pick probably the scariest game i ever played is fatal frame 2. it's got to be the scariest game fatal frame huh i said i just saying the name fatal frame right it's not, i i think played it i'm not sure I know I heard of it. It's, what were some um, of the things in that game that, that freaked you out, though? Um, certain ghosts, the uh, the ways like uh, they battle you, the the different uh, maneuvers they have. I don't want to call them maneuvers. It's like they like have different patterns, and they'll like disappear and vanish. Sometimes behind you, sometimes to the f sometimes like oh, there was this one in Fatal Frame Three that uh. You, you ran into her several times, and every time you took a picture of her, she just disappear. And uh, one uh, uh, by the time you had to fight her, it became a boss battle. And is that the game where you're in that school and you have the camera? No, or is that, I'm thinking of something else. There's a horror game that takes place in a school called Obscure. It's kind of like a weird, kind of like a high school horror flick. That's, okay, that's what I'm probably thinking of, because there's a but scene I don't, I don't know like if there's that. a camera. I don't, I don't think there's a camera. Honestly, reminded of Outlast when you're saying camera. But anyway. Well, for ahead. me, probably the thing in a horror game that's most creepy is Gurgoth from Castlevania. Okay. Which, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post this in the, the Discord. Is Castlevania a horror game? Oh! I consider it one. Yeah, holy shit. Because that thing's that thing that thing is is like nightmarish and suggestive. His the wow. skin will come off its head and go like halfway down it. Oh. Which one is that? Is that Symphony of the Night? I yeah, think it's weird. from from one of the uh -oh. DS ones. Or oh okay. Cuz it it looks like Symphony of the Night or Rondo of Blood, which by the way, I'm excited for for it coming out for the Switch. Is it coming out for the Switch now? Both of them are coming out for the Switch in a pack. Rondo of Blood and um, Symphony of the Night. It's called the uh, Castlevania Requiem pack. Wait, wait, wait. You said Symphony of, the no Symphony of the Night's coming out for Switch? Yeah, Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood. Uh, damn, are you serious, man? I did not know about that. That's the best one. Wait, Symphony of the Night's coming, for the, coming to the Switch? Yep. yep. Man, we're all finding out, man. Oh, I tried emulating that th that game because I was wanting, really wanted to play it, but um, the the sound was just so awful, and yeah, I couldn't deal with that. But it, my little brother played on it, played on my computer for a while, just because he wanted to see how far he could get with how awful the sound was. He wanted to see what Dracula sounded like. Dracula came out like a garbled mess, like. He's like, work is a man. Like that. Miserable pile of secrets. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I consider Castlevania totally to be a horror game, even if it's not focused on being scary per se. I mean, the entire tone is I, horror. It's got the aesthetics. It's got the skeletons and zombies and ghosts and vampires and all that, but yeah, it's not scary. I'd say Castlevania is, well, like... Castlevania is like the universal dark, dark um, the dark universe of the Universal Studios. It's done. It's the dark universe done right. I think um, the scariest Castlevania games are um, the ones on the PS3, like because they're so dark. 
or I think like the, the atmosphere because they're 3D. The 3D. I think they're the first 3D Castlevania games. If I'm correct, I'm not sure, but they were really dark when I played them, and bloody, and they were kind of scary. You know, I'd really like a Castlevania survival horror style kind of game. I'm kind of surprised they haven't made that. That'd be cool, and you get to pick who you want to play as, which main protagonist you could play as, like, Richter, Simon... Nah, Strat that won't be possible, because those are from two, two entirely different time periods, to be honest. I know. But, but if you did do that, then you, you, would, you would probably change the time period that they're in, so it would change the aesthetics and everything, so that actually could be possible, but neat, but it would also take a lot of, um, a, a lot of resources. But we're also talking about Konami, but I mean, so I mean, it's got, it would take a ton. Of, so I mean, they're probably never going to do something like that. I don't know how you'd really do that unless you you had to be like some random person that thought that they could be the hero, and then they they go into Castlevania and end up trapped in there. And I I don't know exactly how you would like keep it Castlevania ish. Ooh, here's an idea. They um they do it, but after um Dracula is defeated, so the castle disappears or or it collapses. So they basically have a guy who's stuck in the castle, in, in like an alternate reality or pocket reality, as he tries to escape and get back to the real world, and he's just trying to survive and he has no combat experience whatsoever. But he sees yeah, like he's got to he's got to wait like twenty years, pretty much. I'm trying to think of like another like freaky moment in a horror game but i mean i just can't pick one. Oh, i got one the um regenerator and the iron maiden i never played that um the regenerator and the iron maiden were uh zombie type special infected zombie t uh, creatures that would regenerate their limbs and the only way to kill them were to find their weak points and the only way to find their weak points was to have like an infrared scope on your gun, and you were so in close in quarters because you were in a f meat cellar. What game is this? Resident Evil 4. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounded familiar. I thought the Iron Maiden you were saying was the game, but yeah. I actually didn't think Resident Evil 4 was that scary. I thought that's when it stopped being scary, but you know, I'm one of those dudes. No, um, no, like it, the game wasn't scary. The, the um, like the whole game, the only like the enemy was like Iron Maiden and Regenerator. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty weird. Do you ever play Eternal Darkness? Is that the one that uh, basically it, it's like the GameCube game where yeah. it basically messes with everything and there's a sanity meter, I think? Yeah, it's uh, yeah the sanity meter. And it messes with you. It goes like really meta and it gets really weird. There's this one point where uh, it makes you think that uh, the system turned off. And like uh, all your data got er oh, so like Batman. And all your data got erased, but like it's just like a trick. Holy crap! It's really interesting. So that that just reminds me of Batman, like Arkham Asylum, where the, where you're infected with like fear gas, and like it, he tricks you into thinking that the game broke, and it tells you like press the press the, like in button to continue or something or something like that, and you're like using a game like a game controller, and like where is the in button? It kind of reminds me of. <laughs> I think it's called Amnesia. What I've heard about that one. Yeah, the Amnesia, the Dark Descent. Oh, that, that's a, I was just about to bring that one up. Yeah, I never played Pigs. This isn't there. Isn't there like a sanity meter in those ones too? Yes, there is. You know, after Resident Evil Four came out and like survival horror changed into the whole action shooter kind of thing, like it stopped scaring me entirely. I had Dead Space, nothing. Uh, Re Resident Evil games, I stopped even playing them. And then, like, there was this one other game called Deadly Premonition, which was actually really cool. It was, like, an open-world, Twin Peaks-influenced survival horror game. But it was a really bad game and had a really bad graphics. And after survival horror just stopped scaring me after a while. And then Amnesia came out, and that game was just freaky. What about typing of the dead? <laughs> what about it? You can spell scary in that game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what what type of horror game can you spell the word scary in? Or spoopy. Well, I remember playing the Zombie U demo, and it was like, partly unnerving, partly just... I don't know how to describe it, but there was like, an unnerving aspect, because it didn't like control that great. 
I don't think. Honestly, Zombie U is one of the few um, Wii U games I wanted to try out. Um, what is it? Dying Light game was pretty scary for a modern zombie, like, first person, like, Dead Island game. It was pretty scary with the different types of zombies, like, when you, you, you like, don't go at night. Never go at night in that game. Cause are, we just, just, are we just going to keep listing zombies, random zombie games? I can just pull, I can just type in zombies into my um, Steam account and pull up, a ton, pull up a ton. Yeah, there are a lot. Yeah. yeah well, let's not, let's not be here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All day listing out zombie games. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, if if you want, I can just type in "scary" in the, in the Steam, and we can start ta- and I can start t- naming out a bunch and see, and, and we can start seeing everyone's opinions. Uh, do you guys like? Do you guys like JRPG games? Like the, or I mean, like the um, not JRPG, the uh, what is it? Um, like RPG Maker games. Only if they're good. I've not really played any games that people have made in RPG Maker. I'm about to play Undertale as soon as we get off this phone. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> um, there is this, there is these two, or actually three, um, games. It, one was called Maseo, um, Mad Father, and Crooked Man, and those were really scary. If you if you're looking for like a, a scary, like they're all free games too. Um, but they're really scary. I mean, on Steam, they cost money, but you can get them for free on a website. The scariest game, the scariest thing about RPGs for me is the turn-based combat. This uh... one's not a, this one's not a turn-based, it's more of like a survival horror, where you gotta run away from the monster, or... Oh, okay. Yeah, there's no, like, but there's no, like, um, turn-based, and also you gotta like, collect items, and then use them, like, a key item, like, and then use a key to unlock a door, or use this to, like, climb up something. You know? It's like that, mm-hmm. right? It's, they're really good. And they have multiple endings, too. Oh, that's classic trope. Serve for Well, it's a shame you didn't play Undertale before this discussion. Otherwise, because that, that's gonna be a pretty scary game. <laughs> I've heard, yeah, yeah. I've never played Undertale, and I want to, but I know it's a good game. Just the yeah, I'm really excited for it. The fan service, I just think, is a, a little, you know. I want some. I tried to go a pure pacifist run. If you ever try to do that, don't sell your weapons, because uh, I did that, and I basically soft locked myself. My had to my, my had, but luckily for me, I, my little brother had like a special mouse. I had to uh, basically he wrote like a little program for it. But basically, uh, there's a little bad saleswoman in the Tem village that will, if you buy something for like one thing, she'll you she, she'll buy it, buy it back for two. So you just buy up buying a ton of that and getting a ton of money off of it. I would sell all my weapons and buy buy like mostly defensive stuff. So I, I was good in defense, but I couldn't attack. So I mean, and at the end, you're eventually just, you can't really, like the, there's like a little part of the game where you're kind of forces you to fight. So at that point, I literally was soft locked because I refused to do anything other than uh, try to spare him. But when I, but after learning more about the, the, what I was supposed to do, yeah, I, I I needed to be more offensive, so I, I selling weapons was not the way to go. I'm trying to be as low as I'm trying to not spoil anything, so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's good to know. I was gonna play a pacifist route first and then maybe the second time I'll do it the fighting way. Just just remember do not yeah, sell yeah, weapons. Weapon. Yeah, 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 right on. There's gonna be a point where you're just giving a really strong weapon to like somewhere towards the end. Not gonna say what, how, or where, but once you get don't sell it, <laughs> not saying anything, but uh, once, but uh, just, yeah, just don't sell that one weapon. You can sell every weapon. Well, before. I mean, if a game, if game designers want to make sure that you don't sell a weapon that you're gonna need, they should have it have almost no value. Well, I mean, it's a good weapon, so it's gonna have value. So or just it, make it a key item that you can sell. Well, I mean. The game itself, like it, it, it's still possible, but I mean, 
in the, in the, but you'd have to be doing it perfectly and not take any damage. I'm yeah, not what if, that good. What if somebody wanted to fight the final boss for like three hours. Exactly. That's my point. I don't want. I didn't want to do that. So I basically spent every all the money I could just to get like tem armor, tem, like a tem weapon. I, I spent like several hours just letting my game run. So the program that my little brother wrote should uh, allow me to basically just continue the game because I got bored of not because I wanted to finish it. Okay. Well, where can where can viewers find you? All of you guys. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Septendo. Um, you can also find me on YouTube, Septendo. Yeah, and that's you should check him out. It. He has some pretty good content. Right you know, all of us have pretty good content. I don't think uh, Xenoters really put up a lot yet, though. Have you? I'm I'm trying, but I lack originality when it comes to videos. <laughs> I've only put up two videos, and um, tomorrow I will be recording two videos, and uh, hopefully sometime this week I will be uploading both of them. I'm honestly planning to make a video pretty soon. I just got um, I, I just uh, I just got to think about what the subject is. I already thought of the intro of what I'm gonna do, but I haven't figured out how. Um... Okay, but where can people watch this video that you're gonna put up soon? <laughs> you can find me. At Xenature Gaming on YouTube, I'm the one, like like I like he said I don't have too many videos, so look for the one with at the time of this record at the three videos up. There's two of them. There's two channels called Xenature Gaming. I own both of them, and you can also find me on Twitter at, at um just type in Raymac um, Raymac three for Smash, and that's a, that's it. And if oh. man, are you still here? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Nintendo Man. I I actually have a Twitter. I want to I want to plug my Twitter. I'll, uh, I have it in the description, and I don't know if I can actually put it in a card here, but I might. Well, it was nice having all you guys on here. Yeah, man. Was, thanks for having me. It was it was a fun discussion, and I hope we can do more. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. there's plenty more ideas we got. Plenty more. Right on, dudes. But Until next I'm not time. feeling so good. <laughs> I don't feel so good, Mr. Sark. 